Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the first session of Reconstructing Minds Incorporated Outreach Ministry. Um, you know, today I want to talk about something, you know, that I think is uh, very important. Um, I'm going to be using uh, an analogy from the Bible in reference to us as human beings um, a lot of times we don't recognize the very war that lies within ourselves because see we want to do right but in essence there's a part of us that wants to do wrong at the same time and you know I, I truly believe that when we understand that we are at war within ourselves we can truly uh, get to the essence of the issues in our lives so I want to use an analogy from the Bible in reference to what I'm going to be talking about uh, Romans chapter 7 uh, we see that the, the Bible writer um, was talking about the law the commandments and you know a war within ourselves, a war within mankind, as it seemed, the spiritual sides of us, which represents our minds according to the teachings of the blueprint. It says, Now, it says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he lives. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, sin is another word for offense, which were by the law. The law in this context represents regulation, a principle. Did work in our members, which represents a lamb or parts of the body to bring forth fruit unto death. Fruit, that word fruit can represent our behavior, action, mannerisms, the very characteristics and the essence of a man. It says, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of in the letter okay it says what shall we say then is the law sin or is the law an offense god forbid nay i had not known sin but by the law for i had not known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet but sin but offenses, but sin, taken occasion by the commandment. The commandment is an authoritative prescription. It says, wrought in me the manner of conspicuance for without the law, sin was dead. In other words, without moral principles, the law had the, the law of sin sin which is represented as a transgression of the law in the Bible was dead it says for I was alive without the law once when the commandment came sin revived and I died and the commandment which is an authoritative prescription which was which was ordained to life I found to be unto death for sin taketh occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me in other words it killed me and it says wherefore the law is holy the principles are holy and the commandment the authoritative prescription is holy just and good what well, then which is good made unto me, God forbid. 
but sin that it may appear sin working death in me by that which is good for sin that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin in other words brothers and sisters we know that the law represents moral principles and the commandment is an authoritative prescription which is utilized as a uh, a way of life or lifestyle management it says what then which is good made unto death in me god forbid but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good th that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin for that which i do i allow not for what i would that do i not but what i hate that do i you know a lot of us you know uh, we come from different uh, walks of life some of us have witnessed some of the major ills of life, drugs, prostitution, death, incarceration of our parents. Um, all these different things play a, a major role in our upbringing. And, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing that, you know, there comes a point in our life where we want to stop doing what we have always done and um we just want to live right but it's just something on the inside of us that steers us to do, do to do wrong and those things represent uh are represented by the poverty by inequality uh by an unjust uh just system all these different things play a difficult role in our lives it says if then i do that which i i would not i consent unto the law that is good in other words you consent to the principles of that which is good it says now then it is no more i that do it but sin that dwelleth in me you know we all know that it it just as much as we want to do good, there's always a side of us that wants to do wrong too. You know, no matter who you are or where you are, you know, no matter how many moral and principles that you are raised on, you know, there's just something about us that continues to want to do wrong. It says, if then I do that which I would not, I could consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. You know, it's a struggle. And this and this particular uh, passage and this analogy that I'm using from the Bible in Romans chapter 7 represents our daily lives, the struggle that exists within us, the war within, the war within. And, you know, what compelled me to use this was, you know, I was one of those individuals who came from a good family, raised in a uh, in the church, but that doesn't necessarily meant that I live by the standards of uh, of the church. But I want us to really pay attention that we recognize in our lives that not only is there a physical side of man, but there 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 is a spiritual side of man which represents our mind, and it says. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. 
and rep that represents in the end for us is death, incarceration, and recidivism, criminal lifestyle, criminal behavior. It says, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Evil is always present. No matter where you're at in life, how far you are in life, this exists from the highest walks of life to the lowest walks of life. And, you know, there is something within us that compels us to want to do the wrong thing. That's why it is imperative that we uh, change the way we think because a lot of the things that we do begin not only with the action but with the very uh, thought process which represents our psyche which in essence is the psychology of uh, doing wrong and doing what is right. It says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man and God uh, according to the teachings of the blueprint is only a label but what I want us to get the essence of this message is there is only one source of all uh, existence. And it says, after the inward man, but I see another law in my members. Another thing, in other words, you know, we recognize within ourselves as we continue to fight this war within ourselves that no matter where we're at in life, you know, one of the limbs of our body in, is being used in the biggest, uh, the, the major part of, of, of the issue and how it comes to exist. It begins psychologically. It begins with the mindset. And uh, it says, but I see another law in my members warned against the law of my mind. Now, the mind represents our intellect, divine or human, in thought, feeling, or will. In other words, our very understanding. It says, but I see another law in my members warn against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. In other words, sin represents the offenses that is committed by our members, the, uh, the lust of our eyes, the lust of our very own flesh, and the pride of life that we face. Uh, it says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And the reason I am sharing this with you, my brothers and sisters, is allow you to see that we are at war within ourselves, but the chains can be broken. No matter where we're at in life, no matter how much wrong we have done, there is always a possibility to make it right. But will everybody accept us? That's the question. And we, can expe we cannot expect for everybody to accept that we are changed. We have to show them that we are changed. And as I uh, get ready to close, I want to read you something from the blueprint, uh, page 108 at the bottom, the bottom paragraph, it says, if you want to know the one source of all truth, then raise the shade of hatred that blocks your ability to love, raise the shade of negativity that blocks your fulfillment of life, raise the shade of deceit that blocks the rewards of loyalty. Raise the shade of illiteracy that blocks your way to knowledge. Raise the shade of foolishness that blocks simply, that blocks your display of wisdom. Raise the shade of conscience, your inner voice that blocks you, your gaining a better knowledge of these truths and principles. Truth is plain and simple. Once you raise the shades that block your view. So there are different things about ourselves that we have to continue to let go. 
We have to let go of hatred, negativity. We have to let go of deceit. We have to rage war on illiterate, on illiteracy. The blueprint states that we wage war on illiteracy. That we uh, let go of the foolishness in our lives. That we raise the shade of conscious being. Because there is only three, uh, three conscious levels according to the teachings of Sigmund Freud. It says either you're pre-conscious, you somewhat know. Either you're conscious in the knowing or either you're unconscious in the knowing. We want to let go of being somewhat conscious and being unconscious. We always want to be conscious because that allows us to always be in the knowing. And, uh, you know, I want to leave y'all with a couple of things when it comes to the vision of, of the blueprint. Uh, in essence, this is, the, this is my understanding of the blueprint uh, according to the teaching of the vision. This is the essence of the vision. Uh, and I've shared this with one of my big brothers before, um, and I'm going to share it with you now. Um, this is coming out of Proverbs, Proverbs 29:18, and I just want to read this to you real quick. Proverbs 29:18 says this. It says. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If you uh, keep a precept or a statute, if you pay attention to the authoritative prescription, you will be okay. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And then in Habakkuk, Becker says this as I bring this session to a close real quick, quickly. Habakkuk says this. Habakkuk says this in Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 2 and 3. And it says, And the Lord said unto me, answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. You know, Concerning the vision, it was the master of the vision who visualized a concept in our lives called growth and development. And the essence of that concept is organization. Organization is a unified and consolidated group of people with an executive structure that deals with the well-being of all its people. It's an executive structure of business and enterprise for individual growth and collective acceleration of the body as a whole. When you think about the vision, I believe that the one source of all existed existence really poured out a piece of itself into the psyche of the master of the vision and enabled him to show us how to live out lifestyle, positive lifestyle management. Growth and development is about po positive lifestyle management. And I hope that we all understand and truly manifest the vision in our lives. 
I leave as I come with plenty much love. Blessings to you all.